kid's a, that kid was a great player. Ready. Yep. Ready? Welcome back here into Nofi High School. Our audio went and took, I don't know, took what a, a, took a, took a donut break. Holiday, yeah. <laughs> and so, but hey, the show must go on. We'll continue as uh, we'll turn uh, that microphone back on. But uh, okay, so if you didn't hear the Dave Ellis, uh, you know, the whole thing, either did we. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but Dave, uh, hey, you do the best that you can. And hopefully you can hear us now. Was uh, again, we're back live up here. Let's, let's talk about this Division Three matchup between uh, Gros Seal uh, and Holland Christian. Again, Gros Seal been here five times in a row. Something we were talking about when you couldn't hear us, but let's actually <laughs> talk about it now that you can. <laughs> so. Yeah, we kind of had a dry run there, and uh, you know, I was talking about that. There's two ways into Gros Seal, and I think two ways out. So that tight knit community, the the spirit that that they they possess and they've been here five times in a row and Dan was telling us a little bit about the 17 district championships that they've that they've won in a row and the experience is, is probably going to win out today yeah well 17 out of 18 but still an amazing yeah, amazing feat. but I look back through the archives I mentioned say they've won districts in 21 of the last 27 seasons I don't think anyone else in the state has put up those types of numbers in that you know, and, and we've talked about this before, you know, sometimes geographic location can have a lot to do with outcomes and, and historical runs, right? We've seen it in Grand Blank, for example, had a really long historic run of district championships because they, they didn't have a lot of uh, teams that were in Division One level, very competitive up. And as a matter of fact, there's only five Division One schools that are passed. I think Saginaw or, or, or Flint, for that matter, uh, in the state of Michigan. So, but Gross Seal, a team that every single year finds a way. And I think if you ask John Evans right now what his thoughts about his team compared to the teams he's had over the years, this not his strongest team. But again, finding a way with that history, that experience. I mean, th all those things help guide a team in moments just like this. Yeah, I think it's important for players to understand the occasion, and it's really important for coaches to understand the occasion. It's not always so much that, like, wow, we're in a state championship game. we got to try to win the biggest game. you got to try to figure out how to get your team nice and calm and get them to understand that, yes, it's a big occasion, but we also have to play the, the way that we normally play. And all that experience over the years, it just kind of leeches into the team, and everybody gets a, a, a much better feel for what it's like to, you know, move past districts into the regional, into the state semifinal, and then here we are today in another state championship game for Gross Seal so and John Evans. Three MHSA titles in total, the most recent one back in 2020, not 2019. I misspoke. Two runner-up finishes, again, five years in a row. Um, you, you look at uh, at the record overall, again, 14-7. and seven. John Evans, 150-15-10. and 10. Only lost 15 games in his career. Um seven of those in this year you know so half of his loss is coming in this in this campaign this year and then Holland Christian 19 and 1 and 3 they're ranked sixth in the state um their power rankings were two Dave DeBoer have been here in 10 years 157 30 and 22 they've got two MHSA titles the most recent one was back in 2003 uh, so they've been there twice and won it twice so up until five years ago Holland Christian spent a long time in division two or class b going back to the you know, 90s and 80s, but always a very good team. But you have to look at defense, and th does defense win championships? It's delivered the Maroons to the final day of the season. Seven goals allowed. Their, their team goals against average is right around 0 0.31. It's it is. one of the best we've ever seen in, this, in state history. Daniel yeah, Daniel Morgan, senior goalkeeper, 0 0.31 goals against 15 shutouts this season. Oh, then Kyle Cannon, the senior forward, 16 goals, three assists. So they've got some, the ability to score some goals. Um, can they do it today here against Gross Seal? 
Yeah, it's, it's impressive. The goals against are impressive. The interesting thing about statistics is you don't know what those seven goals, where they came, how they came. Did they come against, you know, set pieces? Were there Was there four penalties? Were they at the end of the game? Were that they were winning five or six to, you know, one or two or something like that? And, or, and, and, and who knows? Who knows? So you, now we're in the big stage, and they really are stingy at giving up goals, and I think that that's going to prove to uh, be a big benefit for them. That it will be. We don't. I want to say this. We have our picks today. We we have each <laughs> talked about who we think is going to win this. We're not going to tell score lines because score lines those are, are you know um, that can be fun. But uh, we have our predictions about who we think is going to win this one. So we'll, we'll we'll let you guys know that here in a little bit. But let's start talking here about this Division Two matchup that's going to take place here on this field right behind us between Cranbrook uh, and uh, and Richard Goal Richland Goal Lake. Uh, again, two really good teams. Cranbrook, we've seen them this season, Rick and Dan. We've seen them quite a bit. We saw them against uh, against Hamtramck here in the regional final here a few weeks ago. Uh, we saw them against Catholic Central in a in the division uh, in their Catholic League final matchup that went into double overtime. Um, and uh, to, you know, to be fair, that game ended in a way in which uh, I think could be talked about for generations between those two teams in the Catholic League. Um, but uh, again, just you know, Cranbrook, very very good team. Uh, they were back here in 2014, as I talked about earlier. Earlier. But coming into this one, not as many games clearly as Richard Golick, 15, 1, and 3 overall. Richard Golick, 21, and 3. Um, they were ranked number one in the season, I think, all season long. I don't think that they ever knocked out of that number one spot during our, our, our ranking shows, uh, Dan, did they? Golick fell out late in the regular That's season. Right, yep. They fell down the third. They had those two losses in the Southwestern Michigan Athletic Conference tournament. They lost to Matawan. And St. Joseph's, they had beaten those teams handily earlier in the season. They went through a, just one one week of a rough stretch, but they have definitely regrouped. It's an explosive offensive team, outscoring the opposition 92-14, to I think, in the finals. They have a ton of future college players. They have lots of guys in the midfield and up top that are scoring, setting up, setting up goals. And goalkeeping, they got two very good goalkeepers between the pipes that have kind of alternated and uh, – 14 goals allowed heading the finals. It's another stout defense, so the well-rounded team. They're very deep. They they they're a lot like Rock from D1. They'll run a lot of guys in and out of the lineup to wear wear opponents down, and that's what they've been able to do since the beginning of August. They just wear opponents down. And and again, looking at their history, three MHSA titles. Most recent one is back in 2020. They've had one runner-up finish. Cranbrook. They we talked about this with Dave Ellis. I don't know if anyone of you heard. It was a, more of a whisper. Uh, we did talk about Cranbrook and their history. They've been here once, 2014. Lost to East Lansing. That game went overtime. Um, I was I was on that game as an official. I'll keep saying that because it was <laughs> it was fun. It was actually on the road in Brighton when we covered that game, and uh, um, it was it was a phenomenal game because again. Cranbrook Cranbrook went down in that game 3-0. They clawed their way back and, and ended up uh, tying that matchup, uh, making it 3-2. Uh, sorry, a 4-3 uh, in overtime. Uh, a, a phenomenal game that that was. Dewan Jones uh, for East Lansing, now a member of the MLS. Um, you know, and and now Cranbrook's back here once again. And we've talked about this. You know, maybe not their strongest team that we've seen in years past, but, you know, hey, they're playing soccer the right way at the right, at the right time in their, in their season. Yeah, they're they're a resilient team, battle tested in the in the Catholic League. Uh, when 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 we covered the Catholic League final, I thought they're they're top players to watch here. I thought Hooker was fantastic. I thought that uh, Atgun, their goalkeeper, was absolutely amazing and really did a good job of marshalling the area, controlling the box, and dealing with the space in behind his back line. Um, and then Evan Evans was all over the place, uh, creating goals and generating attacks inside of midfield, and uh, was really impressed with with what Cranbrook brought to the table. And Nathan Hooker, he's got the 10 goals and 8 assists. Uh, he scored the game-winning goal uh, this past week over Riverview in, or in the semifinal that sent them here into this game. Uh, so uh, he's a phenomenal player. He actually went down in that Hamtramck game, did not return. Um, so it's good to see him back and uh, playing here in, in the state final. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great to have them back at full strength. Sorry, Dan. No, it's okay. Cranbrook, they struggled a little bit against Hamtramck. They scored those two goals in the final three minutes to escape, but... You know, they, they beat a very dangerous Riverview team, a very explosive Riverview team in the uh, state semifinals. Riverview actually won the Huron League. We talked about Gross Seal's string, long string of league championships came to end this year. Riverview was tops in that conference. So, Cranbrook has played some very tough teams along the way. 
So as we're going to step aside here for a break as the wind is swirling around, almost knocking over our monitors and camera. <laughs> but uh, don't go anywhere. We'll come back. We'll preview the Division One matchup taking place in Comstock Park here at noon. In just about 25 minutes, we'll give you our predictions and send you home. You're watching the MHSA pregame show right here on the Michigan Soccer Network. I'm a husband, I'm a father. I'm a sister. I'm a son, I'm a brother. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. Their first ball, their first uniform, their first number, their first teammate, their first goal, their first coach. We take great care in making sure their first isn't their last. We're so much more than a soccer class. Come play with us today at kickstarttoddlersoccer.com. City Food and Brewery has two Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made from scratch food, brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of Seven Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Our goal is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help players with their technical skills such as ball control, dribbling, 1v1 skills, passing, receiving and finishing, but we also help players with awareness, off the ball movement, speed of play and just overall confidence on the field. What level you're at as a player, I'm confident that we can help you get better. We work with players of all levels, starting for players that are just starting out to college and professional players. We offer one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, large group, as well as team sessions. Come in and check out our program and I'm sure you'll be happy. We do. We do it every week. Whether we need to or not. We did it today. It was really dirty. My parents do it every day. Hey, kiddo. Do it every day with the Unlimited Club only at Jack's Car Wash. Protect your car from the hot summer sun, dust, dirt, and contaminants all summer long with the Jack's Unlimited Club. Join today starting at just $24.99 a month. I watch soccer on the Michigan Soccer Network. I watch soccer on Michigan Soccer Network. Let us run the on Michigan Soccer Network. I watch soccer on Michigan Soccer Network. I like to watch soccer on Michigan Soccer Network. I watch soccer on Michigan Soccer Network. Me gusta mirar football in Michigan Soccer Network. I watch soccer on Michigan Soccer Network. I love watching soccer on the Michigan Soccer Network.
We welcome you back here into Novi High School. This pregame show on the Michigan Soccer Network. My name is Jonathan Turner, Rick Larson, Dan Sickrat. The Encyclopedia of Soccer here in Michigan knows, no one knows more than Dan Sickrat between the X's and the O's of teams and players than this man right here. Glad we have him as a director of news, Rick Larson, my color commentator and analyst throughout the season, as well as Dan. So it's been a pleasure to have both of you. As this is our final broadcast of the high school season on location high school, this coming Tuesday, we will be bringing you the Dream Team Reveal live right Can't here on the Michigan Soccer Network. <laughs> That's taking place at Granite City Food and Brewery. Answers and troll, 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 answers and troll.